Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the factors that affect the cooling of a building. It's a pretty straightforward topic, so let's get started. I'm showing you here two buildings. This photograph is taken with a camera which can detect thermal energy. On the left hand side we've got a poorly insulated building and you can see that a lot of thermal energy is passing out through the walls and the windows of the building. The building on the right hand side is well insulated and you can see that in this case there's much less thermal energy passing out of the building. So in this video we're looking at the factors that affect how quickly a building cools down. In other words, how quickly a building loses thermal energy. Now there are two main factors. The first is the thermal conductivity of the walls. Now you don't need to learn the actual definition of thermal conductivity, but you do need to have an idea of what it means. The higher the thermal conductivity of a material, the higher the rate of energy transfer by conduction across that material. Now modern houses are built from two layers. We've got an external brick wall and then an internal breeze block wall. Between the walls there's a cavity. Now the thermal conductivity of walls built like this is actually fairly high. That means that a lot of thermal energy can transfer out of the house. That's a problem in the UK as we spend a lot of money on heating our homes. So to correct that, builders pack the cavity with an insulating material like this. Now this insulating material has got a very low thermal conductivity. This reduces the overall thermal conductivity of the wall by up to 10 times. So much less thermal energy passes through the walls and escapes from the house. Now as well as the walls, thermal energy can also escape through the windows. Single glazed windows have quite a high thermal conductivity. So most houses now have double glazed windows. These have a lower thermal conductivity, so less thermal energy can pass through and leave the house interior. A lot of thermal energy can escape through the roof of a house, so we can reduce this with loft insulation. This also has a low thermal conductivity, reducing the rate at which thermal energy passes through. So as we've seen, we can reduce thermal energy transfer from a house by constructing the building using materials with a low thermal conductivity. The second thing we can do is build a house with thick walls. That also reduces the rate of thermal energy transfer. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on cooling of houses in my Vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. Okay, so hopefully now you should be able to describe the factors that affect the cooling of a building. 